Dr. Sleep. The name boggles me because I didn't really understand it. Uh, starring Ewan McGregor, uh, Rebecca Ferguson, and newcomer Kaylee Karen. Um, they call it Dr. Sleep, but they only say the name once in the entire show, and it's like in passing because of an interaction that he has with someone. And the guy's like, you're like Dr. Sleep. You're a doctor. He's like, I'm not a doctor. You're a doctor. I'm, no, I'm not a doctor. You're like Dr. Sleep. I didn't understand that. I understood why the person said it. In that moment, for that just couple of minutes, it made sense to that person to reference that name because of the situation. But through the entire movie through the entire rest of the movie it didn't make any sense there was no need for him to do that he didn't do anything before that two or three minutes of, of film or after that to be referencing that particular name so they should have called it something like the shining two or something it would have made more sense um i i, I, I don't know that's that got me because the whole time i was like okay Sleep. Let's see why they call him that. What? That's how I felt through the whole thing. Um, it felt like a it felt like a superhero movie. You know what I mean? Because it was it was a person with superhuman abilities that may or may not be more than than human. Maybe supernatural. Maybe maybe magical. Maybe. Maybe they had, you know, mental powers. They were using a little bit of this and a whole lot of that. Maybe. I don't know. But they didn't really tell where the power comes from, but it exists, and they're facing a group of other people with similar powers that are going to fight them. Nobody turns into a monster. Nobody busts out of a closet and is like, oh, there's none of that. It's just these superpowered people fighting these other superpowered people, like Blade. Blade's a vampire, but he's fighting superpowered vampires. They all got like similar powers. Uh, Ghost Rider, he's a demon. Really, he's a demon from hell. He possesses a dude and he's enacting his version of revenge. But he's a superpowered person who gets his powers from that, you know, from hell. And he's fighting other people who got their powers from hell. Spawn is a dude that went to hell, got powers, and now he's fighting people from hell. The Hulk, it's a modern day Frankenstein. A man tampers with science and powers that he doesn't understand and unleashes a beast that fights other beasts that were, you know, created through science. Even Batman, really, Batman is a complete and utter lunatic that dresses up like a bat and walks around town finding people that he thinks may have done a crime and then he smacks them in the face with a batarang. It's crazy. But he also fights people who have to be put, not in jail, but in Arkham Asylum because they're crazy too. That's like this movie. This dude has these super kinetic, crazy, crazy powers. They don't really tell you where they come from. They hint that they might be magic. They might be, you know, maybe it's mental powers. Maybe it's demonic. Who knows? Who knows, man? But he's got these abilities and he's fighting other people who have similar abilities. All they, they, you know what? I wouldn't say all they needed were flashy costumes, but they had superhero names. The Crow. You know, Rose the Hat. They all had hero names and villain names. It was like a superhero movie with the, with the pretense of being a horror movie based on the conclusion of another horror movie. It is not. It's, it's a veiled superhero movie. Um, you know, they never say if they're monsters. That's, that's the thing that got me. There were so many things that left unanswered. They just created stuff so you'd have to ask questions. Like she was, they called me Rose the Hat. My hat. Some say it's magic. And I'm thinking, okay, well that's going to come up later in the movie because she's magic. Nope. She didn't want nobody to touch the hat, but they never explained why. What's up with that hat, Rose? 
They never tell us. But maybe she's got power. Maybe her powers came from I, I don't know. It didn't make any sense. You know? She never, like, used a hat and flashed it at somebody and, like, lightning came out of it or nothing. She just said, my hat's magic. And I'm thinking, what else you got? What was so build on that? Expand. What else? The hat's magic? Okay, I get it. Thor's hammer's magic. I've seen him do stuff with that. Didn't say nothing about that hat. But basically what the story is, the story starts off many, many moons after The Shining, the movie The Shining. You know, here's Johnny, he breaks through the door with the axe, that movie. Later, the kid who's on the, the, the little scooter riding around the hallway sees the two crazy twins, girls, and the blood coming out the elevator. That kid, as an adult, has learned to deal with his ability to um, sixth sense ghosts everywhere. He can see ghosts. He always sees ghosts and monsters and stuff. And what he does is he locks them up for some reason in his own brain. He locks them up in his mind and he, and, and, you know, he, he cages them up, which has got to be bad because he ain't killing them. He's just locking them up. So for decades, all of these ghosts that he's encountered have been locked up in his mind. Then they introduce Rose the Hat. And she is with a group of people who are eating people who have the shining. Or as the one girl said, the magic. Or whatever. They hint that they may be a group of quasi-immortals who have been going around eating the smoke. They want that smoke from others who are powered by whatever powers them and they literally they cut these people up and they eat pieces and when the people are dying the essence of their power comes out of them and they, they suck that up too so there's all that and she is has been doing this apparently for a really really long time her the leader of the group she's not the leader she's just like the the, the main one sort of the leader is an elderly dude who has been doing it since the Roman Empire, apparently, and um, they they, re, they they come across the girl first, who is in, a, in the movie The Shining. They said that the boy was the most powerful shiner that they had found. In fact, he used his power, and he spoke to his his mentor, and he made his nose bleed from a three states away. That's, that's powerful, I reckon. I don't have the shining, so I don't know for sure, but it seems powerful. The girl is so powerful that thinking about her allows her to enter your mind, and she can whack, she can hit you with the shining and throw you across the room from several states away. Also, actually, if she was on a different coast, they were on the west coast, she was on the east coast, and she still managed to give this chick a smack. So she is more powerful than everybody else in the entire movie but for some reason when danger approaches she runs now me myself if danger is a cat with that hasn't been declawed and he's going to scratch me i think i can deal with that because i am more powerful than a kitty cat she was way more powerful than all these people but she's like oh we gotta run we gotta get out I didn't understand that either. It didn't make any sense. Why are you running? Why don't you just, you know, zap them or whatever you got to do? I mean, you you beat the glue out of her from the other coast. If she's in your house, there's no way she's surviving you. But they ran. They're like, oh my God, they come to get me. And I'm like, so? You're more powerful than them. But I guess it would have wouldn't have made sense to the plot. They should have made her weaker than them. But the thing is, they wanted her because she was so powerful. But I don't know. It's 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 a, it was it was a good movie. They had some good actors in it, and they were doing their thing. But the script and the story was a little hard to digest. I mean, it's a story about demonic superheroes or whatever they are. So I mean, to begin with, you have to be prepared to understand that this is just a movie. And I get that. 
but at least you know it should make sense when Dorothy got sucked up by a tornado and taken her eyes I was like well that don't make no sense but it moved her from one place to another that made sense she had to follow a yellow brick road to get from point A to point B and stuff was trying to get her trees and flying monkeys and witches on brooms it make no sense but for the story it made sense this thing Dr. Sleep the name didn't make any sense to me what was going on in the movie made me go why is that and not just because it was a movie just because it didn't make sense they were putting things in places that didn't make sense to me unless they're planning on making another movie to explain all this stuff like who are these people where did their power come from why are these select people being made as powerful people are they like mutants are they demons are they aliens what is up with that why are they eating other people that have the shining what's the shining are these opposing forces are they the same people but some of them are cannibals there's a lot of questions why is she called Rose the hat what's up with that hat Rose too many questions too few answers I watched the movie I shall not watch it again but that's what I think have you seen it I enjoyed The Shining better because it made a whole lot more sense to me but that's what I think more importantly what do you think have you seen the video have you seen Shining which one do you prefer? Let's talk about it in the comments. And as always, if you like the video, if you like the content, subscribe. And then like.